What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Quickly I want to give a shout out to Rifty Beats for making these fire cowboy beats that I'm using on these videos. He is killing it in the studios so go check him out. I'll put his stuff in the description below. Let him know I sent you guys. And make sure to watch to the end of the video and hear the new outro. It is simple and very nostalgic. As far as business goes, we'll take a look at some of the Polestar updates this week and we'll take a look at the chart and see what's going on with the stock price. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you guys want more videos like this, make sure to smash the like button. And with that being said, let's get to it. We'll start off with updates from the CES 2022. Polestar and Volvo's forthcoming SUVs will be getting the next generation of Qualcomm's Snapdragon hardware, which will be running Google's latest operating system. And I'll also go through some of Google's planned updates for the automotive Android system. So we'll cover that in a bit. First, I want to cover some of the Qualcomm news. So Polestar isn't actually due until the end of this year, but we do know that some of the tech that's coming out in this SUV is not going to be like the previous models, our Polestar 1 and Polestar 2. That was basically confirmed on Tuesday. Polestar and the Volvo family will be using the next generation Snapdragon infotainment architecture that's going to run Google's Android automotive operating system. So with this announcement, Qualcomm stated that this new hardware is going to deliver much swifter performance, which includes graphics that render 5 to 10 times more quickly with an overall system speed that's 2.5 times faster than its predecessors. The audio digital signal processing will also be 2.5 times more rapid. So all of these increases in speed suggest that this new infotainment system will be capable of much snappier performance. And as before, the system will feature over the year updates and will still include the navigation via Google Maps and Google Assistant. So this announcement does give us a better idea of what the Polestar 3 will be capable of. It shows that Polestar is busy working behind the scenes. Obviously, they're working with the parent company, Volvo. But now they're actually also working with a blue chip named Qualcomm to finish designing these vehicles, producing them, and getting them shipped out. This also does give me some optimism that Polestar could start releasing more details on the Polestar 3. Uh, since that is scheduled to start production in the second half, it would be really nice to get some updated renderings, more spec details, interior pictures, possibly even announcing the opening of pre-orders. That would be huge and just give us an updated timeline of what's to expect this year for the Polestar 3. Some of these updates could provide some movement in the stock, so I will be excited to see how the stock reacts. So there are two big Android platforms that you can use for a vehicle. The first one is the Android Automotive Operating System. That is the one that Polestar has been using. And then you have the Android Auto. I think this one doesn't have like Bluetooth updates. Uh, so this one is essentially more limited. And basically what this is, is basically mirroring someone's smartphone into a car's dashboard. So obviously there's more functionality available on the operating system. So for the Polestar 3, they're going to use the same operating system. They're just going to use the next generation Qualcomm hardware. So expanding on that to give you a better idea, the automotive operating system is a version of the Android that lives inside the car's dashboard, powering navigation, media, climate control, instrumentation, and more. So it doesn't rely on a phone to function like the Android Auto. So one of the big benefits for the automotive OS is that you'll be able to do over-the-air updates. But in general, both of these apps could allow for deeper, more intuitive connectivity with phones in the future. Volvo and Polestar are working very closely with each other. They're using the same SPA2 platform, and now they're also going to be using the same Qualcomm hardware. So this really does give me confidence that Polestar will be able to execute and get these SUVs out on the road. Timeline is still unclear in my opinion, but the confidence for me has definitely gone up. This also does bring an opportunity to redesign some of the interior. So it's unclear if the next generation Snapdragon 3 system will make use of a similar 9 inch portrait oriented touchscreen like those vehicles or, or if there will be enhancements to the menu system or any other physical changes. Uh, you guys already know my opinion. I do hope they redesign some of the interior to help pave the way for autonomous driving. So definitely turning the screen landscape and making it bigger would be really nice in my opinion. And also making the car feel more spacious. That would be a very nice touch. Not dinging them down though. Polestar has received some praise for their sleek and modern cabins. But they have received some criticism by overly using the touchscreen controls instead of physical buttons. So maybe they can bring a few physical buttons back in. Maybe in the car vents or the radio volume. But those are just some ideas and i'm sure you guys know both the polestar 3 and the next generation volvo will both be built in volvo's new plant in south carolina the polestar 3 will be the first vehicle that isn't built in china so i know a lot of people are scared to invest in polestar because their vehicles aren't built in china right now so hopefully this will bring a lot more recognition to the american market 
and I think this will also help sales in North America since they will be able to deliver these vehicles a lot faster and already have access to the North America market. As I brought up earlier, there are two platforms being used in vehicles. The first one is Android Auto and the one that Polestar is using, Android Automotive Operating System. So at CES 2022, Google did make some announcement for both platforms. So for the purpose of this video, we'll take a look at the updates for the Android Automotive Operating System since Polestar is one of the few vehicles running this platform and these updates and features are going to benefit Polestar. So the Android Automotive Operating System is going to get a bit more powerful. They're going to bring a few new tricks this spring. Google plans to roll out new features and deeper integration with vehicle settings. So drivers will be able to activate driver aid features like lane keeping assistance with a voice command or even ask Google Assistant when their next service is due. This will just help with less navigating through the touchscreen and more of a voice recognition. With the updates to the operating system, they'll be able to download third-party navigation apps, essentially just giving the customer more, more options to choose from. Uh, they'll also be able to search for parking via other apps that they can download. And then the drivers will also be able to search for charging points with apps like ChargePoint and PlugShare. And so it looks like they're working to integrate some of these apps into a automotive layout. They also want to work to sync the car to home relationship. Uh, so they'll be working with car manufacturers to integrate the Google Home ecosystem. Uh, this is going to add remote actions to their vehicles. Users will be able to use Google Assistant on their phone or a Google Home device to warm up their vehicles, unlock or lock the doors, ask for a battery status. So some of this technology already exists, but you can see that Google and Amazon are pushing further into the automotive industry. I know that Amazon recently announced something related to car industry, so I'll have to go look for that. But like I said, most of this technology has been here. I think the plan for this though is to make things work more seamlessly and basically just simplify the process. Again, Volvo vehicles will be the first to support these remote actions. And since you know Volvo and Polestar work closely together, some of this stuff might just be handed off as well. So in my opinion, it's very beneficial for Polestar to be under Volvo's umbrella. So just expanding on some of Volvo, YouTube does plan to get integrated into Volvo's next vehicles. Volvo announced YouTube will be available to download via Cars infotainment system and Google Play Store. The timeline hasn't been specified when YouTube will be available, but it promised it's the beginning of enabling video streaming in cars. So a lot of updates planned for the operating system, uh, such as the YouTube integration and much more. And remember, Polestar is using the same automotive operating system, so it shouldn't be too hard for Polestar to start integrating YouTube as well, since they probably can get help from Volvo. And of course, to live up to Volvo's safety reputation, YouTube won't be available when the car is moving. But again, that is all related to safety. I want to highlight this one sentence here. Volvos will soon become extensions of numerous Google-powered smart devices. Again, this helps illustrate how Polestar benefits from being under Volvo's umbrella. As Volvo creates new relationships with companies, it's also going to bleed down into Polestar. For example, Luminar Technology, Volvo made a partnership with them. And now Polestar will be using some of that technology also. So very beneficial. Just to double down that Volvo getting YouTube into their platform will also influence Polestar. I found this tweet reply the other day, Android Automotive is getting a YouTube app and more control over vehicles. This guy responded asking when Polestar will support it, and Polestar replied the YouTube app will become available in the Polestar 2 in 2022. So that was just a few days ago. So Polestar does have plans to support the YouTube app. So just a quick summary of all the updates that were announced at CES this week. This year's Android Automotive announcements at CES were all about the opening car's connection to this ecosystem. So from a software end, the operating system is getting more powerful. And that's by the way of greater third-party app integration and the introduction of YouTube to Volvo vehicles. Again, that's probably going to bleed down into Polestar, hopefully by 2022. We also got a look at the next generation Snapdragon architecture, which is going to come on the Polestar 3 later this year and carry some of the massive improvements to overall performance. So what are your thoughts on all the updates provided this week? I think this helps paint a better picture of the Polestar 3, maybe not visually since we still need new renderings, but it does help illustrate some of the framework that's being used for it. And it also helps illustrate the relationships that Volvo and Polestar are creating with Google and Qualcomm, which in my opinion are all great relationships. So I hope those relationships improve down the road. All right, guys, as far as charting goes, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. Always, we don't have that volume that we need. We need to be having eight to 10 million on a daily volume, but currently we're doing two and a half to three million. So those are some rookie numbers. We really need to get those up. The short borrow interest rate did go back to under 3%. And that's just because as the price goes down, the risk for the shorts does go down. And so they don't need to pay as much interest. As far as what I see in the chart, uh, we do have a possible triple bottom. So there's one touch, two touch, and three touch here. Or the other scenario, which I was looking at, is it could be a head and shoulders pattern. 
you would have your shoulder here, your head, and then you would also come down for another shoulder. And then that would be a bearish pattern if it breaks underneath that. And we would come down to about this level, so about 10. And that could make sense since a lot of the SPACs have been coming down close to merger date. Now we're expected to close, I think, what, first or second quarter of this year. And a lot of the big money pulls out of the SPACs before merger. Uh, just take, for example, DCRN is the other one that I've been investing in. And that one took a hit today. So this is definitely a possibility. Um, but it could also be a triple bottom like I said and we could be on our way back up to $12 if we can break $12 then obviously this won't come to fruition so just a couple ideas that I have let me know your thoughts in the comments below I would love to hear what you guys see in the chart so guys that is all I have for today's video long term I am bullish on the company and what they're working to build out there are tons of people that still don't know about Polestar's potential or even know about Polestar. Hopefully with a bullish market and some positive catalyst, we do get some volume start coming in. But in the short term, there could be some volatility in the stock price. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to smash the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, keep moving forward.